dream you can imagine, and almost every copy can be imagined at some level. Uh, the 38 years that we've seen so far, I think this kind of got us to this point. But if we look at other art forms, and basically the trajectory of their evolution, you know, writing basically evolved initially to keep track of how much life we had. It was purely for accounting reasons. It was only later that monks, you know, started uh, learning to read and write and write, and you know, basically religious texts were written. Monks would transcribe these texts, not even make more copies, really, they were to venerate the word of God. And monasteries were basically kind of, uh, the wealth of monastery was like the only books they had. Uh, but it was only later that I don't think the monks could have seen this coming. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> two things made this happen. Uh, you know, the first arrival of the printing press, where these things were easy to duplicate. But more importantly, it was the involvement of wide literacy, where a lot of people actually read books. In fact, they encouraged people to read a book, even if they had one. But um, almost any type of media has gone through this really interesting evolution. What it is now is it's nothing like the way it started out. You know, what we think of as comic books actually started out as religious plays. They were basically propaganda. Uh, this is a play showing how all uh, Jesus would watch, you know, his followers speak, the Pope was man, people, you know, bow down to him. And so it was really kind of propaganda against the Catholic Church. Uh, later, kind of scribes and things like stained glass. Um, and you can go back to any of these uh, kind of entertainment formats. And even the people that work in these formats, I think had no clue what was coming. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes from Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, he says, didn't think, and this is him hiding his own invention, that uh, you don't think I'm exaggerating the possibilities of this invention, I'll tell you that it is my firm belief that one day there will be a problem in every major town in America. <laughs> <laughs> now this is the guy going out looking for investors, hiding his invention, um, and he's slightly underestimating the potential of this. <laughs> The television, you know, when that first came out, well, as soon as there would be this renaissance in education, right? Um, you know, and we did get some good educational programs, but mostly we got people pads and stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, and this is one of my favorite quotes about television, but um, some of these things not necessarily live up to the potential that we thought they had coming out of the gate. It doesn't mean they can't, they might not involve in something that will. But, uh, and even, you know, basically the computers that we use nowadays, and carrying our pockets, really with the evolution of the British bomb, which was involved by Alan Turing's breaking the English machine. And I'm sure that Alan Turing, you know, his well as James is not imagining little boys who be killing simulated Nazis <laughs> on an evolution of this device. <laughs> uh, of course, the internet is like the prime example where it was built for military research and now it's primarily used for trading rare Pokemon <laughs> cars and downloading porn. Uh, <laughs> so, any of these things, you know, I think games would be no exception to this. You know, where are they going to go? Uh, you know, these things all had gone from, you know, starting out as very specific problems they were trying to solve. Later, they broadened into very wide entertainment formats. Uh, they were very, you know, diverse of things were done. But only later, after that, they then started aspiring back up to artistic expression. And they became, you know, what we kind of call art, which I couldn't think of as a meaningless term. But I'm sure games now have this opportunity. I think we were in danger of being stuck at the bottom uh, level here, but now they're clearly kind of turning back upwards, I think. Now, we can think of almost any technology as an extension of the human body. You know, cars extend our legs, uh, television, telescope, our eyes, telephone, our mouth, uh, house, clothing, extends our skin. So almost every human technology is some amplification of part of our body in some sense. Computers, internet, networks, etc. expand all these things in interesting ways. But I think the most important thing they expand is our imagination in our brain. Uh, you know, in some sense, I think of these as imagination amplifiers. We're now able to construct, you know, these elaborate worlds, play with them, interact with them, talk about them, and also do with other people, share these models back and forth. And I think that, you know, for me, this is going to be one of the most uh, probably culturally impactful things that our medium can really offer. So that's the end of my talk. And I have time for about four minutes of questions.